Welcome to the Kingdom Seekers television broadcast where Jesus is the King. Well, we give God praise, thanksgiving, and adoration for the privilege and the glorious opportunity that we have to share with you a living word from God. And yes, we do have a word for you today. And boy, oh boy, I have a word. Grab a Bible as fast as you can. Did you listen to last week's broadcast? If you didn't, go to Periscope, Dr. Garen Gatling, or you can go to YouTube at our Kingdom Seekers Television or D-City Ministries and get you a word from heaven. Glory to God. We've been talking about kingdom health coverage. And I'm going to give you the second part of that. We're going to get our healing today and we're going to maintain our health today. God wants you well. You have to believe that. Okay? That's the requirement. He that comes to God must believe. He made it so simple. And the reason why God made it a matter of faith is because it levels the playing field. Nobody can come to God based off their political affiliation. Nobody can come to God based, based upon their pedigree, the color of their skin, how much money they have or don't have. Nope. All that come to him must come by faith. And he's rich unto all that call upon him in faith. That's all he requires. Faith. You got to trust him now. Okay. So we're going to believe God for our healing. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, oh, Abba, Father, we humble ourselves before the authority of the word, sir. According to your servant of old, you sent your word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. According to the prophet Malachi, you're the Lord and you changed not. So if you sent a word, then you'll send a word today. Glory to God. And we perk up our spiritual ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to us in these last days. Lord, we need a prophetic voice. We need a word that's anointed, that comes from heaven, hot off the press. We've had enough, Lord, of religion. We've had enough of tradition. We've heard a bunch of hoop, and it's time for a word from God. Oh, Father, especially in these last days, we need a word straight from heaven. <laughs> and we receive our healing as we receive your word and we maintain our health today in Jesus name. Y'all believe that? Say amen. All right. Go with me, please, to the book of Colossians chapter one. Colossians chapter one. We began talking last week about kingdom health coverage, kingdom health coverage. I mentioned last week there are four things that the believer needs to know. I, folks, this is a prophetic word. I didn't say I was a prophet. I said it's prophetic, meaning I speak under the anointing and inspiration of the Spirit of God. That doesn't make me no hot shot. It's just my job. Okay? And I'm walking worthy of the vocation wherewith I'm called, and I'm doing it with boldness. God requires that. Okay? God doesn't want me with this false humility and all. No, I'm telling you, just like Jesus, I'm anointed. Okay? Now, that anointing that's on me is for you, okay? <laughs> the stuff I give you, I have to practice it too if I want to stay healed. I don't get it just because I'm a preacher. It has absolutely nothing to do with it. I get it because I practice the word. And I'm sharing with you what God gives to me. And we all walk in it. Can you see that? So you need to know four things. Number one, know your position. Last week, the Holy Ghost made that clear. Boy, you know who you are, don't you? Say it. All the men, what are you? I'm a king. Ladies, you're a what? You're a queen. Yeah, you're the righteousness of God in Christ, man. Glory to God. Seated at the right hand in heavenly places. No weapon formed against you is supposed to prosper. See, that's Bible. And we also found out because of that position as kings and queens, we exert our authority with words. Matthew 12, 37. By your words, you're justified. By your words, you're condemned. So it's your words that's bringing about the victory or the defeat, the health or the sickness, the wealth or the lack. It's your words. You have to use your words and you release your kingdom authority in line with the providence of the kingdom. Okay, so whatever God says is what we want to say. Are you listening to me? We also found out that you need to know your benefits. We're going to talk about that today. 
and then know how to withdraw them. And lastly, no current events. Okay, this is a prophetic word, guys. No, what, I, what do I mean by know your current events? Please know what's going on around you. Don't be so super spiritual. You have no clue. I spoke with someone today. I'm not even going to mention it. You know, and, and I, had to, I had to bite my tongue not to get mad at the lady. Because how, how could you not know this? I just, it's, you just have to know, folks, okay? You need to know what's going on around you. Okay, and when you do partake of news and stuff like that, go for the information, not to criticize and say, look what he did. Look at that dummy. But that's not why you watch the stuff. You should be getting information. You'll know how to listen, pray, and you'll know what to say. You should write that down. See, you approach the news with a kingdom perspective. Did you get that? I wish I had time to teach on it. The kingdom perspective. All right. And then you get the information so you know how to pray, so you know how to say, know what to do. Yes, wash your hands. Yes, do the, 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 the uh, sanitizer. Stuff your mama told you when you were three. Cover your mouth when you call. Okay? If your job is on lockdown or something like that, okay, and you want to stay home, stay home. But stay home in faith. Don't stay home in fear. Okay? Just to do it in faith. Whatever you do, even when you go out, do it in faith. Trust the Lord. Okay? We are different. There should be a difference. You're a kingdom kid. You understand? Colossians chapter 1. Look at verse 12. Know your position. Giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet. The word meet is old Elizabethan English from the King James time. It literally means qualified, fit, or able. So you're already qualified. God made you qualified when you made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. Okay, so quit trying to be, you are. Did you catch that? That's your position. He has qualified us to do what? To partake of the inheritance. Say inheritance and underline it. I mentioned this last week in Isaiah 54. Lord, I'm going to take my time because I, I can see like, in my spirit, I see like way down there where we're going. It's going to take about three or four weeks. I can see where we're going. The word inheritance, Isaiah 54, no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper and every tongue that shall rise against me in judgment, I shall condemn how with my words, right? Matthew 12, 37. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. So God says, as the righteousness of God in Christ, you have an inheritance. Now, remember, he qualified you for this. Say this with me. I'm pre-qualified. Glory to God. I'm pre-qualified. Ain't nothing I got to do. I already did it when I confessed Jesus as Lord. What I need to know how to do is what those benefits are and how to withdraw them. But that stuff's mine. When you come into the kingdom, I brought this out last week. There was a king in the Bible. His, he was about eight years old, I believe it was. And I'll have to fact check myself. They made him king, y'all. And it had absolutely nothing to do with him, per se. It's part of the inheritance. Your next son on the throne. Come on. You know, and of course, he had advisors. You have to have advisors to help your kid. You don't know nothing. That's why God gave us apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Your kid. And we need to be taught. I have apostles and prophets too. I got people to teach me. You have to. You need instruction in the things of God. You don't come into the kingdom knowing everything. I got news for you. No, you don't. Okay? So remain teachable so you can remain reachable. You want God to be able to get to you now. So be open for instruction. But we should be giving thanks unto the Father who has qualified us to partake of that inheritance of the saints in light. Verse 13. Who has delivered us or delivered me from the power or authority of darkness. Somebody say this with me. I've been delivered from the authority of the coronavirus. I've been delivered. I've been pre-qualified. I don't have to do nothing. No, 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 no. Don't try to make me do nothing. I've already been pre-qualified and it's by grace to faith. God did that. Okay, he said, my right, their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. See, so if the coronavirus or any other virus or demon has a problem with you being the righteousness of God in Christ, they need to take that up with God. Okay, take it up with Jesus who pre-qualified me. Glory to God. I didn't fill out no application. 
I didn't do none of that. I ain't going online. I ain't pull on no debit card and buy nothing. I got it from God. Glory to God. That's my position in him. So he delivered me from the authority of darkness. Now watch this, y'all, and shout. Has translated. <laughs> he translated me. Where? Into the kingdom. I'm in the kingdom. That's my position. Remember what I said? Know your position. So I'm in the kingdom. Okay. Of his dear son. <laughs> and I've been pre-qualified for that. <laughs> you know what it means to be pre-qualified? This is before, you know, before you fill out the application for the credit card and you get that email saying you've been pre-qualified. You've been pre-approved. In other words, we already checked you out and you pay bills. And so we're going to offer you this. We're going to give you 15, 20. You can apply for this because you've been pre-qualified. We checked you out. When you made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, boo, you pre-qualified. God is saying, this is your blessings, benefits, health, wealth, victory, abundant life belongs to you. You've been pre-qualified. You're in the kingdom of my dear son. Can y'all see that? Then shout glory. Look at verse uh, 14. <laughs> I like how God like never stops. You're like he doesn't know how. He just keeps giving you stuff. You're like, come on, Lord, Lord, really? You've already pre-qualified me. I'm good. That, but that alone is making me shout. But you have more? Yeah. In whom we have redemption through his blood. What do you have? Redemption through his blood. That's good news. Now, let's get into the benefits. What is that redemption? <laughs> redemption from what? How'd you do that? I, I want to know. Because I have it. It's mine. See? Now, how do, I, how do I activate that? How do I access it? How do I walk in that redemption? Because my finite mind knows what redeem means. It means I've been purchased. Yeah, I've been bought back. So I no longer belong to something. I'm in something else. I'm free. Free from what? How did you do that, Jesus? Glory to God. Well, um... Oh, where do we go on, Lord? Oh, I go to First Peter. Oh, my God. Woo! First Peter chapter 1. <laughs> Look at verse 18 and 19. Ready? For as much as you know, stop. What is our subject? We're talking about kingdom health coverage. I said you need to know a couple of things, right? Know your position. Know your benefits. Know how to withdraw them. Know current events. There's nothing wrong with that. Don't be silly. Use a little wisdom and common sense and wash your hands, boo. Cover your mouth and use your sanitizer. If you're not going out because of work, fine. Stay home. Stay home in faith. Are you listening to me? No fear. Okay? But we need to know. For as much as you know. Say it. I know. You know what? that you were not redeemed with corruptible things. It wasn't money. It had nothing to do with your education, your pedigree, none of that. So what was I redeemed with? Look at verse 19. With the precious blood of Christ. The word Christ is anointed one and his anointing. Burning, removing, yoke, destroying power in the blood. I've been redeemed. Glory to God. Yeah, and I know it. I know my position. I know what belongs to me and you can't make me doubt him. Oh God, I know too much about him. Can you shout glory? Hallelujah to the Lamb. All right, go to Galatians 3.13. Oh God. <laughs> Woo, glory. Look at verse 13. I know who I am. Say it. I know who I am. I may not understand all this stuff now, but it has absolutely nothing to do with it. God said, I am, I am. If I'm the righteousness of God in Christ and bless God, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. If I am redeemed with the precious blood of Christ from the powers of darkness, then bless God, I'm redeemed. If that's what you say, I'm going to say so. Did you catch that? We'll be there in a minute. Verse 13. Christ, who's that? The anointed one. The one with burden removing, yoke destroying power has redeemed us or redeemed me. How did he redeem you? You should know the answer. We just read it. 
1 Peter 1.19. Precious blood of Christ. <laughs> now you know, see? That's what we're talking about. Know my position. Know my benefits. I'm going to know how to withdraw them. Yes, I know current events. Boo, I watch TV. Hallelujah. I know, but I got some. Watch this, y'all. I have another source of information. <laughs> Watch this. I got, I got information coming from the White House. Oh, God. And I got information coming from heaven. So I got information coming both ways. Some people are limited. All they know is what's on TV. And then you got other people on the other extreme. All they know is what the Bible says. You need both of them, y'all. You're living in the world. You need to know, boo. Okay? Be knowledgeable. <laughs> you probably never heard a preacher say that before, did you? You need to know. Okay? Don't be overwhelmed with the stuff of the world, but know what's going on. Or as I was taught in school, be abreast of the facts. I just need the facts of what's going on. I don't need everything. I don't need to know who's zooming who and all. I just need facts. Fact, 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 facts. Okay. Where was I? Galatians 3.13. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of of the law. I'm going to stop right on that part there and leave the rest of that verse. What is the curse of the law? Because we've been redeemed from it. I need to know this because this is my stuff. I know my position. I'm in the kingdom. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. I'm seated at the right hand with Christ in heavenly places. I know that I have authority with my words. No weapon formed against me is going to prosper. I have an inheritance. Glory to God. So I've been redeemed from something. And I need to release my kingdom authority to put my enemy in his place. And let him know, I know who I, no, 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 I'm not here. Okay, I'm a king. I'm in heavenly places. That's my position. I didn't say I understood it all. I just know what the Bible says. Now you get your filthy hands off of me and off my household. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28. Since he mentioned the law... When the Bible mentions law, it's primarily talking about the first five books of the Bible. Do, uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Most of that consists of ceremonial law, um, Levitical law, uh, the Ten Commandments, that kind of stuff. Okay, all of that is in there. But there was also a curse associated with breaking it or walking outside of it. OK, now, according to the New Testament, we've been redeemed with the precious blood of Christ from whatever that is. Now, it includes three primary things. We're not going to teach on them, but let me give them to you. Spiritual death or it includes separation from God. And if you read all of it, you'll see what happens when you're separated from God. Terrible stuff happens. Um, it means sickness and it has to do with poverty. Anything that steals, kills or destroys is part of that curse. And it's out there, okay? All right, but look at verse uh, 61 because of time. Well, let's start at verse uh, 59. And the Lord your God will make your plagues one. So plagues are part of the curse. And the plagues of your seed. Great plagues of long continuance. Severe sicknesses. So those severe sicknesses, that stuff attacking the respiratory system of the people, that's severe, y'all. Okay, very, very severe. So don't take it lightly. That's why I said no current event. Don't be silly. You should know what's going on. But you need to also know my position, my rights, my benefit. I know I'm redeemed with the precious blood of Christ from severe sicknesses. Moreover, verse 60, all the diseases of the world. Egypt is in that verse, but Egypt represents what? Y'all been in this faith long enough. You know what it means. Egypt represents the world. So all the diseases of the world, and it's out there. It's hitting China, Korea, everybody. I think I heard there's only two nations that haven't been affected. I believe Sri Lanka and another nation. I'm not sure of the current stuff yet, but that's the latest reports that I have. But pretty much hit everything else. All the diseases of the world. You've been redeemed. OK, you're in the world, but you are not of this world. Stop acting like it. Stop talking like them, because if you talk like them and act like them, you're going to get what they get. And I know that's kind of hard, but it's the facts. OK. Oh, Father, in Jesus name, I plead the blood over the nations, plural. Have mercy upon the people, Lord. I'm asking you to stay the plague. We don't want to belittle anything or talk evil against our fellow man. We want them covered.
covered by the blood too. We want them to get the gospel. We want them saved. We want them healed. We want them delivered. We want them in the kingdom like you want them in the kingdom. Have mercy upon them, Lord. Grant wisdom to the scientists and the medical profession. Grant wisdom to the president, vice president, Pence also. Help those doctors, help them all those in authority, help those in the House, the Congress, the Senate, help the leaders, Lord, to unite, glory to God. Grant them uncanny wisdom to govern in this perilous time. In Jesus' name. All right, uh, verse 61. Well, no, go back to 60. Redeem from all the diseases of the world and from the fear of sickness. It shall not cleave to you. I hope you can read in your Bibles open. See, so we're redeemed from the fear. We know that's true because God hasn't given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. God hasn't given us the spirit of bondage again to fear, but the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Daddy, Father. Healing is the children's bread. And I'm a child of God. I receive this day my daily bread. Glory to God. That's our cry. See? Verse 61. Also, we're redeemed from every sickness and every plague, which is not even written in the book of this law. Say this with me, please. I'm not under the curse. I'm not under the curse. Since Jesus has set me free. Glory to God. We have scripture for it. We all Colossians says we've been delivered from the authority of darkness. I'm not under the curse. I'm not under the curse. Since Christ has ransomed me. Ransom or redeemed. Bought me back. How? With the blood. Now say this with me. For death, he's given me eternal life. <laughs> For sickness, he gave me health. It's mine. It belongs to me. I'll take it now. Thank you. For poverty, he's given me wealth. I receive it. In Jesus name, I purpose to walk in kingdom principle, kingdom authority, kingdom power. Glory to God. In Jesus name. Now you're going to need the spirit of God. That's why Jesus gave them to us. One of the reasons anyway, to lead us and to guide us. We need help with that. Just a lot of stuff that I just said is true, but we need it to be true in, in our lives, in reality. And the spirit of God is part of his responsibility to get that over to you and me. And he's going to help us go to um, second Peter. I'm going to close. I have tons of scripture y'all, but we're not going to get to it all today. Um, go to, uh, Second Peter chapter one. And let's kind of wrap this up with this thought. Second Peter chapter one. This is good stuff. I listened a little bit this morning to uh, Pastor Benny Hinn do some teaching uh, this morning on Periscope. He's another good one to follow. You know, well, listen, you better lay your stuff to the side. <laughs> you better get a word. <laughs> You better get a word. And yesterday I heard a little bit of Bishop Jakes. You know, I'm listening. I heard a little bit of Jesse Duplantis. You know, I'm getting, I want to hear what, I want to hear from these five full ministry gifts, y'all. Whatever their hangups or hookups or whatever, I ain't got nothing to do with that. That's between them and Jesus. I ain't got nothing to do with that. I want to know what did God tell you, sir? Because listen, God loves you, y'all. Do you remember in the scripture when Jesus said, um, uh, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. And they said, Lord, wait a minute. We prophesied in your name. Or we were teaching, preaching, and speaking in your name. We cast out devils in your name. We healed the sick. You remember what Jesus said to them? He said, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me I can work iniquity and be out there jacking up? Sleeping with whores and getting drunk, and getting high and come back in the pulpit and preach and teach. And Jesus will use me to save folks. Yes, he will. Because Jesus wants those people saved, y'all. That's you with your little hang up. Excuse me for yelling at you. That's you with the hang up. That's not Jesus. Jesus wants the people saved, y'all. Now, when those preachers, he's going to deal with them. Don't worry about that. You just get the word. Thank you, Lord. In the book of... Uh, Matthew, I believe it's chapter 25, 23. Jesus told the disciples, those Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. So do what they say. Just don't do what they do. 
but do what they say. What did he mean by that? They're in a position of authority, so you have to respect that. Now, I'm going to deal with that. And he did. He went on to say, woe unto you five scribes. Woe unto you Pharisees. Y'all remember that? That's all in the Bible. Read it. Matthew 23, 24, 25. Read all that. Just, you'll be like, wow. Yeah. So he's going to deal with them. Don't you get caught up in that. You better get you a word because they sit in Moses' seat, per se. Okay. Or say it this way. They sit in Jesus' seat. They sit in Jesus' place for you. The apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. So receive the word. You ain't got to do what they do. <laughs> but you better get that word, they say. And that includes me. Get that word, baby. I speak under the anointing. By the way, I am living right. <laughs> Glory to God. All right. Uh, 2 Peter chapter 1. Let's close with this thought. Verse 1. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus, the anointed one. To them that have obtained like precious faith. That's part of your inheritance. You have precious faith. With us through the, there goes that word again, righteousness of God. You remember Isaiah 54? Their righteousness is of me. The righteousness of God gave you faith. You ought to talk like that. I have faith. Stop saying I don't have faith. You, you're lying or, you, or, you, or you're deceived or you're lacking information. Let's say it that way instead of say lying. You're lacking information if you think you don't have faith. You do. Either you or Jesus just told me a lie. Because the Bible says you have like precious faith. Doesn't it say that? Of course it does. Through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus, the anointed one. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the, what's the next word? Knowledge. What's our subject? Kingdom health coverage. Know your position or have knowledge. Know your benefits or have knowledge. Know how to withdraw or have knowledge. Know current events or have knowledge. You ought to be the most knowledgeable person on your job. You ought to be like the most knowledgeable person on your street. Of course you should. <laughs> you're, getting, you're getting information from two sources, man. You know what's going on down in the earth because you watch a good you know, news station to get information. And you know how to rightly divide and compare it to the word, what's fact, what's fiction, get rid of the, the mess, and compare it with Bible prophecy and what's going on. And you have kingdom information come. Call them out. As a matter of fact, I'm your newscaster from heaven. <laughs> I'm reporting to you the news from heaven. So get it from them on TV and get it from me. Glory to God. Isn't that good news? Y'all, my time is gone, but that anointing is flowing. I wish I had like another hour with you. Thank you, Father, for the word today. Oh, God, bring us back next week and we'll keep giving them a precious word from heaven. I thank you that by Jesus stripes they're healed. And I thank you for the faith shield that's about them to keep them from this coronavirus. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll be back again next week for another life-changing word from God. Until then, you remember, Jesus is the King.